Hi, welcome to part two of Intro into Knife Making. Today we'll be going over things to think about when you start designing a knife and how to accomplish that. Uh, in this tutorial I'll be mainly using SawWorks um, and kind of run through my process that I do for uh, customers that want a knife template or the full-blown uh, design. Uh, so uh, I'll also be going over some basic techniques that I use to make relationships to make a good looking knife and you can do this in a computer program or on paper. So a little bit about my background, uh, I'm a mechanical engineer so I've been using SOLIDWORKS for over 10 years. I'm a SOLIDWORKS certified professional um, so this is kind of my my program. There's some other programs out there that are similar to SOLIDWORKS that you can get um, for free or cheaper than SOLIDWORKS. Uh, Onshape is one of them. It's got a very similar interface to uh, SOLIDWORKS um, and then uh, SOLIDWORKS has an inter entrepreneurial package that you can lease it for like eight months for like 800 bucks or something like that. Um, some really good programs um, I think uh, you know there's there's some other cheaper 3D programs uh, but since I use SOLIDWORKS all the time you know that's kind of be what I'm going to be going over here um, and then you know also you know just good old-fashioned pen and paper is also a good method as well. All right, so let's take a look at what I do to get started. So I like to draw natural relations based off of geometry that is known. So what that means is I'll start out with a star and I'll say that, you know, in, in between this point and this point, that's where the handle and blade transition is going to be. And then I know that I want my handles to be about four and a half inches to about five inches long. And then my blades can vary out from there. So by sizing up the star, I can get a, a good relation. I used about 36 degrees on here, so I got about an eight inch overall. So it'd be about, you know, four or four, you know, be a little small of a knife, but uh, it's a good starting point from there. And then from there, as soon as again, I get something, you know, laid out how I want it, I'll start uh, highlighting these other relationships that I can use to create um, parallels to them or uh, just kind of get some nice flowing curves like you know uh, this this is a good line to go parallel to because you know it's not too steep it's not too sharp and then you've got some other ones in here that I can that I can tie to as well I think as long as you keep these relations your knife looks better in the end rather than trying to uh, come up with different angles just try to keep it simple try to keep the relations something that is, you know, um, something that's natural and your knife is going to look better in the end. So that, that's one way to do it. Um, the way that I'm going to show you guys today though is taking a, a picture or a photograph or something of a knife that uh, you want to turn into a knife in SOLIDWORKS. So I have this knife here. So I've been working on this knife for a customer. I'm going to show you what he sent me. So in here he's got his hand-drawn sketch where the transition wants to be, where he wants his blade, how high up, dimensions of the blade, um, lots of good information in here, approximate hole locations, how far, um, hole sizes, uh, lanyard hole, uh, and just the general profile. So this is a really good, really good starting place uh, for in SOLIDWORKS. And how you put this in there is you'll start sketching on a plane. You'll go to Insert Tools, and then it'll be, a, um, I believe it's in uh, Tools, sorry, and then Sketch Tools. And you won't be able to see it on here, but it's down, down at the bottom of this panel. is going to be a Sketch Picture, and it's going to let you take a picture, insert it into a sketch, and that way you'll be able to draw on top of it. So rolling this down, so here's the blade profile. And how I did that is I've used a series of curves to match his 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 drawing. You can see that they're they're laid on right about right over the top of it. Um, so it takes a bit of bit of work getting him in there. And I would use curves over splines. I've just found that over the years, um, when you go to water cut these splines, um, tend to make the water cutter jittery and doesn't give a nice smooth curve as well as curves do because it's a better 
it's got a better mathematical equation going on in the background that it helps flow um, follow those uh, curves better when you're water cutting so I went through and I uh, added his holes and we kind of we went back and forth a couple times and moved some things around so um, where the swells are and everything and then then the pin locations and everything so um, we got this locked in now and we got the profile done Go ahead and hide uh, the background picture. So it looks like in SOLIDWORKS I added some construction lines for the blade transition. How I center these holes is I add a line tangent to this edge, a tangent to this edge, so that way I know it's centered. And then uh, add the other hole concentric to that. Then space them uh, 1.5 inches away from each other, about 38 millimeters and um, then extrude the profile. That's how I get this profile done. Next up I'll go ahead and, and transfer those holes over and take a cut and cut them out. And then the next portion of this is going to be adding the blade um, uh, grind in there. So I recommend if you guys haven't already check out Blades Guide to Making Knives. And here he's got a whole tutorial on how to use SOLIDWORKS to make knives a bit more in depth than I'm going to go into, as well as a step-by-step -step process on how to add these planes and the cuts and everything. Uh, this blade has also got like three or four different knife making methods in there. I really recommend it. Uh, it's a really good book. All right, jumping back over into SOLIDWORKS. Okay, so first things up is to make the plane, and this is going to be the plane that is defined off of uh, a point at the very tip and the line you want to be perpendicular to that point. So after you get that plane, you can then draw on that plane um, your profile for your cut. Since this is going to be a Scandinavian style knife, I set the midpoint is going to be going, I'm going to have a cut that goes right through the midpoint of that blade. And then I've got it going up twice the thickness of the blade. I think that gives a nice cut. And then you kind of oversize everything to make sure you cut everything away. Uh, next up is going to be defining the path. So right down the center of your blade, you're going to want to define your edge. Let me edit this, be a little bit easier. You're going, to, you're going to want to define the edge. So I, on my center plane, I picked the surface and I did a convert to entities. That'll bring in all the sketches. And then you can move this um, up and down. Right now I've got it fixed in the right location. Uh, up and down and based on where that ends is where your cut's going to end. So let's take a look at it. So here it is, um, profiled in, turned out pretty nice. You can go, go ahead and mirror that on the other side. So now you've got the cut going down both ways. All right, and then the last um, thing that I did is I went in there and added some holes to help lighten up the handle to push the CG forward. So it gives it a bit livelier feel um, if it were me doing this knife and water cutting, I would do these holes a bit differently, but since uh, I want it to be done so he can do it on his drill press, just give him round holes for now, and then if we go back and, and do some water cutting, I'll probably come in here, take a bit more material out um, to move the CG just a bit forward. Um, but we'll decide that as soon as he, he gets his um, prototype done. Alright, from there, you can make an assembly. And that assembly, you can bring in a couple different um, items to make uh, all sorts of different things. So I've got my basic blade in there, and I've gone ahead and made a handle for that blade. So we've been working on uh, the profile of it. Uh, these can get a bit tricky in here, uh, just because that you're working, you're not working with anything that's straight. Everything's swooped and curved, and and you're cutting at you know various angles. Um, so basically, I brought in a, let's just go over what how I made this real quick. Did um, 
So you do an extrude boss on it, the profile, and then made a couple planes, did a, a extrude cut on the front to kind of get that how I wanted it um, cut back just a little bit. And then I did an extrude cut on the sides to kind of get that, uh, the swells in there. Um, did some fillets to make it look a bit nicer and actually suppressed them. So I first started out with fillets and then I found out that doing a swept cut um, provided a better profile for this blade. And then another swept cut on the other side for the other side. And then added some fillets I believe at the end right here just to kind of finish that off. All right, and then just mirrored it over, made a second one on that side. So that's all looking good. So part of part of doing this for my, my customers, so now I'm going to take this to my 3D printer. We're going to print it out. I'm going to send it to him. Uh, he's going to get a feel for everything, have a good reference for what this knife is going to kind of feel like in your hands. Um, 3D printing and modeling, you know, it all looks good uh, when you're modeling it. But as soon as you get something in your hands, you're going to be able to tell right away you know, what needs to change uh, before committing it to material. Um, so, uh, if you guys follow my Instagram page, you'll see photos of that and how it turned out. Another thing I'm doing for him, and, and I'll be doing for other customers too, is, is um, doing a template that I can print out and then they can use. So uh, what I did for this in SOLIDWORKS is I brought in a part. I put that part into my file. And so how you do that is uh, create a new part file, go insert, part, pick your part, insert it in. So I did that with the, with the blade profile. And then you pretty much take that profile, you remake it, do a new extrude. And then I did a sketch here. Not sure what the sketch is. Oh, this is where I. So my printer has a limitation of eight inches. This knife is about nine inches, so I had to split it. I like to split it right down the center, right where the transition, close to the transition point, and then in SolidWorks you can do a split body, and then that will to make two separate bodies um, that I can print from. So this is going to be the blade of that knife. All right, so switching over to the template file that I made for him. Uh, this is what I like to do. So I like to transfer that profile over again, uh, put in some smaller holes, just enough for your center punch to fill. And that way your center punch isn't wandering on you. You don't have to guess where the center of that hole is. This will guide you right in there. I added some other smaller holes that don't go all the way through the material. These are going to be for quarter inch magnets to help you hold the template down on the, the material. Then I also like to do a little bit of a split defining between the handle and then the blade and then that profile of the handle as well. Um, just kind of helps you visualize what the knife's gonna look like when you're laying it out. So I'll, I'll go ahead and print this off for him as well and then send that to him and be sure to check out our Instagram to um, uh, to follow along what happened with that and what everything looks like uh, in the end. All right, thanks for watching. We'll come back with part three and actually start getting into some, some knife making. All right, thanks, guys.